Well, let's get to our first topic of discussion today. Now, despite several interventions by the Central Bank of Nigeria to stem the tide of forex volatility in the country, the persistent foreign exchange scarcity in the country has continued to worsen, thereby affecting the, all aspects of the economy. This development has adversely affected the rail sector and has made manufacturers resort to the parallel market, where a dollar goes for as high as 615 naira to source for forex for the importation of raw materials, spare parts, machineries to sustain their business operations. Amid unabated microeconomic challenges confronting the Nigerian business environment, the worsening shortage of foreign exchange uh, analysts say will continue to inflict more pains on manufacturers if the issue is not urgently addressed. Well, let's discuss this more and, of course, some other burning economic issues. And I'm being joined uh, live via Zoom uh, by a partner, a tax reporting and strategy at PricewaterhouseCoopers, Mr. Kenneth Enrique. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for starting the week with us on Business Nigeria. We appreciate this. Good afternoon, Todu. Thanks for having me. Yes, manufacturers bleed at the moment. Yes, that's what that report says, as forex scarcity bites harder. A liter of diesel at the moment sells for above 800 naira. There's been issues of taxes and other issues that manufacturers, small businesses, have had to grapple with. But let's stay now with this forex issue. How does it come to you, and what do you think this means for that sector? Okay, so, so that's one of the biggest issues in the manufacturing sector today. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest conversations that you would have with any potential investor today. Um, so especially investors looking into manufacturing or development of products. Um, one of the questions they normally have is if I bring in um, hard currency into the country today at a particular rate, I'm able to generate profits in that company which I set up or that manufacturing plant. Now, when I'm taking out my profits or when I'm taking back my capital, am I able to access the same for FX at the same rate? Or would that give rise to, to some loss of value for, for the investor? Of course, that question um, presupposes that the investor is able to access the same window through which they brought their capital. Now, the most popular window is the I and E. Um, however, when investors bring in their capital through that window and then they want to purchase raw materials. Um, there is so much scarcity and lack of liquidity that they are then forced um, to, to explore other avenues, particularly the black market. And therefore, this um, gives rise to a massive erosion of value for manufacturers. And when you look at you know, this, as well as the tough terrain, which they already find themselves, it becomes very difficult um, for manufacturers to, to turn a profit for, for their stakeholders. So these are some of the challenges. Um, and the CBN, to an extent, is trying to react to um, look for other avenues to diversify the market because we're largely dependent on oil and gas, which we, we can talk, talk on a bit more later on and the challenges that have. But obviously, we need to diversify the economy and look for other means of FX. Um, and one of, the, um, one of the mechanisms the um, central bank is looking at is the ROT200. Um, and one of the you know, innovations there is to give um, you know, exporters an additional 65 naira on every dollar they repatriate through that window back into the country. Um, but when you look at the margin between the parallel market and the I and E, so let's assume the I and E is about 420 today and you give it 65 naira, that 
you know, gets the exporter to about 480, uh, which is way less than what they would be able to, you know, the, the value they'll be able to get from the parallel market. Um, so, so, you know, I don't know how far that innovation will bring about stabilization of the FX market. Um, but obviously, we need to export more. Um, otherwise, um, these challenges will not go away overnight. Hmm. Great stuff. Uh, really a good way to start this conversation. But I I'd like to follow up with... Can you hear me, Mr. Kenneth? I'm struggling to hear you. I guess it's network. It's raining heavily here. But, but I am worried about the efforts of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Do you think they are in any way paying off? Some say that the stoppage of a supply of FX to BDCs is also one problem that needs to be addressed. Yes, so to be honest, I think we are in dire straits at the moment um, where um, intervention will be difficult to achieve much. We had an opportunity previously. Um, so when we first had this um, FX liquidity challenge, ironically, it was when the price of crude oil um, dropped below $40 per barrel, and it was really bad. Um, and therefore, our FX earnings was significantly impacted, and we couldn't meet up with the demand for FX. At that time, you know, the um, parallel market, so-called black market rate, began to um, deviate massively from the um, official rate. Now, the tides have turned. So normally, in this sort of situation where the price of crude is above $100 per barrel, we're supposed to see the reversal of the challenges we're having with FX liquidity. The problem we have now is that, you know, even though the price of crude oil is high, the production, um, or meeting up with our production quota, which is, you know, in terms of the budget, we benchmarked about 1.8, um, 1.9 million barrels per day. We're only about a, able to meet up with 1.3 million barrels per day. And that's due to oil theft. So a new challenge has come into the mix that makes it impossible, even from what we generate from the high price of crude, to meet up with the demand. And then when you also look at the other items which we need to contend with. For example, meeting up with the crude, uh, sorry, the petroleum products imports to meet up with the um, demand domestically. Uh, and you may have seen some of the fuel queues. You know, that therefore means that the available FX is, is already eaten up by, by imports. Um, and just from petroleum products, a lot of it is gone. So it is very difficult to solve that problem right now by the central bank. So what we're seeing in this space is that a lot of companies um, open bank accounts with several banks. Um, and then through the various banks, they're trying to access dollars through several avenues. Um, but when you talk to manufacturers, even though the CBN has said, you know, um, 60% has to be allocated for importation of raw materials. The manufacturers are not even able to get up to 20% um, of their FX requirements. So I think overall, it's going to be largely impossible without depletion of our foreign reserves, which we've seen, to meet up with the demand. So a lot needs to be done around diversifying of the economy. And perhaps, even though this may look like the wrong time, looking at just in, you know, a free float of the exchange rates so that the laws of demand and supply will then di dictate the pricing um, of, of the FX. And once you, you get to that stage, it will then be that it is going to be absolutely necessary for the manufacturer to, to pay the market price um, and therefore, things will begin to stabilize. So I think, you know, um, apart from diversifying the economy, the government, 
particularly the CBN, also needs to look at, um, you know, allowing the, the laws of demand and supply to dictate the exchange rate. Now, all these are said with, you know, with ease because I'm, a, I'm an outsider, um, but the challenges are massive, and I appreciate that those challenges are not easy to surmount. In the medium term, we need to also diversify, you know, our sources of FX, and we cannot continue to depend solely on on crude oil. Um, and and we've seen a bit of disruption happen in that space, and what it means to our FX portfolio, because we are unable to meet the demands just because we are unable to evacuate, you know, what what we what we produce because of crude theft. Um, bunkering and other vices. So we need to look at agriculture. We need to look at um, you know the commodities we pro produce. We also need to look at you know where we have competitive edge in terms of services, um, and then generate additional effects from from those sources. Uh, and it's not just going to be a program from the central bank. Um, the other stakeholders have to be involved in government. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council, um, the Ministry of Finance, um, and also some revamping of some of our export incentives, which we currently have. Um, so the export expansion grant, for example, has to be made to be easier for exporters to access, um, and has to be, you know, there has to be more certainty around, you know, the payment of the rebates. Now. Um, you know, those things need to be in place, otherwise we'll, we'll continue to struggle in the medium to long term. Mm. Great. Uh, uh, you already answered my next question because I wanted to ask you, I wanted you to react to the submission by some analysts saying that uh, we should allow the law of demand and supply take charge. As some say, the dollar might go as high as a thousand naira, but maybe later... Uh, we could see a reduction along that line. But I, I don't know. You will understand that better than I am. But I want to follow up with saying that as much as we can get everything in our country inwards, looking inwards, what's your take with regards to backward integration for some of the manufacturers? Because uh, many are saying we can look inwards oh, with regards to some of our raw materials and all. Yes. Um, so that's... <coughs> Excuse me. That's an important point. We, we obviously have to look inwards, um, but you cannot um, overnight come up with policies that demand for immediate backward integration, because that takes some time. And also sourcing for the quality that's required for the production requires a bit of investment um, for, for it to happen. And I'll give you a quick example. Manufacture of tomato paste. Obviously, the tomatoes have to be of a particular quality for it to produce, you know, at the level of the, the Heinz ketchup, you know, which is quite popular. Now, um, so, so you can't just start a farm, you know, and immediately integrate overnight. It's going to take a bit of time to set up the farm, to set up the processing plant, and then have that integrated with the, with the manufacturing process. Um, so we can't come up with a policy that just you know, precludes manufacturers from um, accessing raw materials from foreign commodities markets. It's not going to work. Um, and, and again, these manufacturers face significant challenges that um, is not experienced by other manufacturers in other markets. So which therefore means that it may be more competitive to import than to produce locally. Um, this is why an integrated strategy is important. Not just dealing with the issue of backward integration, but you also need to answer the questions around infrastructure. You know, the, the, the important questions around availability of power, accessibility of power, the infrastructure to get products from one location to another, the security concerns around getting products from one location to another, 
um, as well as the other challenges, um, you know, which we've spoken about before. You know, so the strategy has to be an integrated strategy that incorporates, you know, um, you know, ease at the ports, you know, pro pro providing infrastructure, providing energy for manufacture, um, and then, you know, the evacuation back to the ports for exports, as well as, um, of course, the free float of the currency, which would be, um, I think, initially adverse, but in the long term, you know, would be the way to go. Um, and obviously, like I said, these are challenging things for, for the governments to, to answer. Um, so they obviously cannot, you know, um, ease the, the market and say, you know, the laws of demand and supply should take effect overnight. That has to be done, you know, methodically and over time. Otherwise, what you will find is that a lot of the manufacturers will just run out of business because of the high cost of inputs. So, you know, a program needs to be worked upon, you know, not just the government, but with stakeholders to agree on a long-term policy and plan that integrates all of these components together to ensure that we have a viable manufacturing sector. Unfortunately, if we fix FX, you know, infrastructure will still be there staring us in the face. And then when you look at all the, um, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement and the possibility that Africa becomes a common market, what you then have is that the countries with more competitive edge, you know, will be producing at a lower cost than Nigeria within the same market. And what that will do is that that will send a lot of our um, companies um, on the ground. So all we would have is the market, but we will not be able to do the value addition, which is where the critical economic, um, you know, uh, viability is. So we need to fix everything at the same time um, and have a proper program that incorporates inputs from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and the organized private sector and work on that program to have a sustainable manufacturing sector. And we can do this based on areas where we have a competitive edge. Um, you know, for example, in manufacture of clothing and textiles, we're not going to get there overnight. So maybe we need to focus on agri and agri products um, where we already have some edge in terms of the natural inputs like rubber, um, like cocoa, um, like, like palm oil and so on. Um, so these are, you know, the expectations that when the government is looking at a plan, um, and incidentally, we're, we're looking into an election year, some of these questions need to be answered. Um, what is the government going to be doing about security? What are they going to be doing about FX? What are they going to be doing about infrastructure? Um, and what will they be doing in terms of incentives to stimulate our manufacturing sector? Because monetary policy alone cannot solve the problem which we are facing today. Very interesting conversation. I was thinking we'll be able to touch on the second topic, but I think we've been able to deal with this so very well. And I must thank you so much. So we'll have another day for the other discussion. I must thank you so much. I've been speaking uh, to Mr. Kenneth Rikumede. Uh, he's been talking to us around manufacturers and what they face with regards to FX and all of that. He's the partner, tax reporting and strategy at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Thank you so much. And do enjoy the rest of your day.